Are you curious what all HubSpot Operations Hub has to offer? Well, we're gonna break it down for you in this demo. Welcome to HubSpot Hacks, where we help you get more out of HubSpot. HubSpot Operations Hub is my favorite way to really power up a HubSpot portal. It really helps you stretch the limits of what's possible in HubSpot and gives you a lot of tools to keep your data nice and clean. So whether you're a HubSpot power user or you're just getting started with HubSpot and wanna make sure you've got all of those features available to you, then Operations Hub is really worth considering. Now, compared to a lot of other HubSpot hubs, Operations Hub doesn't have a ton of features but the few features that it does have really unlocks a world of possibilities. So we're gonna break those features down for you today really in two categories. The first one is gonna be data quality, and the second one is going to be what it makes possible in workflows. We're gonna be focusing today on the HubSpot Operations Hub professional version, but we'll end at the end with just a little bit of what it has in the enterprise version as well, in case that's something you're considering. So let's dive in here. So what we're looking at First here is our data quality platform, our data quality tools inside of HubSpot. And this is one of those things that Operations Hub turns on for you. So you get here by going to reports, data management, and data quality. And the first thing you're gonna notice is a couple data quality trends across a variety of aspects here. So we can see some trends around our portals or around our properties, how many duplicate properties do we have, how many properties do we have that don't have any data in them, and how many properties do we have that are just completely unused. We can look at some data quality trends around our records, so formatting issues, duplicates, data sync, workflows, so you can see uh, just a nice high level glance of how is our data quality inside of HubSpot. But we can get even more detailed here. So in properties, we can click on view all property insights, or we can click on this drop down here and go to property insights. We're inside of our test portal, so this is gonna have a lot of errors, hopefully less than what you have. We have all kinds of things that aren't really being used in our test portal that we've created for demos and, and all kinds of things in here. So it'll be a good, a good example of, of uh, all of the issues that Operations Hub can surface for you. So in this property insights, we can see again, how many don't have any data at all, how many are completely unused, and how many might be duplicates. And HubSpot's using some AI to, to surface all of these. So we can go down to properties, and it's gonna show us all of the issues. So we've got 622 that it's recommending that we review. And it's gonna tell us why it's recommending that, that it why it's recommending that we review it. So we can see the issue here. So in this case, this first uh, test property here, there's no data and it's unused. We can hover over it and see exactly what that means. Uh, we can also see some information about it. So what object is this property on? In this case, this is a deal property. Uh, hasn't been updated um, since it's been created. 0% fill rate, so it's not being used in anything. We don't have any records with information in that property. And then it's not being used in any HubSpot tools, which is this column here. So again, we can scroll down here and see all kinds of things um, that HubSpot thinks we should review to clean up our properties. The other place that we can drill down is our data sync insights. And so data sync is a tool inside of Operations Hub. This is kind of the only thing that the starter version has. It's a tool that allows you to sync up and integrate with a lot of other apps. So if you're using data sync to integrate with other apps, it's gonna show you how that's being used and whether there's any issues there. And if we go back to our data quality portal here, we've got a couple other really handy tools in Operations Hub. So in this records, you can see we've got formatting issues and duplicates. So formatting issues is something new in Operations Hub. We can click on view all here. And it's going to use AI to say this record we think has some formatting issues. So we'll give an example here. So this contact test round robin form submission, the issue that HubSpot surfaced for it for us is that it includes a common placeholder text. So our current first name is test and it recommends this proposed fix of remove. And we can either accept that or reject that. And we can also do that in bulk uh, if we want to accept all the recommendations here. So it's gonna give us some tools to surface those formatting issues. And we'll talk about in a second how we can also use tools for Operations Hub to prevent those formatting issues altogether. So the other thing that it allows us to do is manage our duplicates much more quickly. So uh, hopefully you already know this, but if you're already using HubSpot, HubSpot's using AI to 
tell us when it thinks a contact might be a duplicate. So it automatically deduplicates if a contact has the same email address or if a company has the same domain name. But what happens if a contact doesn't have the same email address but shares a first name and a phone number? Well, HubSpot's gonna show that to us in a list and say, we recommend that you deduplicate that. You don't need Operations Hub to do that, but what Operations Hub allows us to do is it allows us to do that in bulk. So rather than reviewing every record that it thinks is a duplicate, we can actually select as many as, as we want to here from the list and then merge those together if we, um, if we do a quick review. So this is the view that you would typically see in a, a regular hub without Operations Hub, but you wouldn't get this check, check box to the left. So you'd have to click on each one of these, review it and decide if you wanna merge it. But with Operations Hub, I can now say, actually, all seven of these, you're right, these are duplicates. I want all seven of these reviewed, or maybe the second one here is not, so go ahead and review all six of these. And we can select a criteria if we want to, uh, to decide which one gets kept in that merge, and then we can just merge all of those. Or we can reject all of those to tell HubSpot, actually, these aren't duplicates, uh, please remove them from our list. So it's a much quicker way of managing the duplicates in your system. So as you can see, already Operations Hub is making our management of data quality inside of HubSpot a lot easier. So this is some really, you know, any, any user can, can do this very easily. Um, we're gonna get into some things that are slightly more technical with the automation. So let's jump over to our workflows. And what HubSpot's gonna do is turn on some features for us in workflows that we already have access to if we're already using a professional version of any other hub. So let's go to create a workflow and we'll do from scratch. And here we're gonna see the first edition of a new feature from Operations Hub, which is this schedule. So what this allows us to do, just like it says here, is set up a recurring trigger that repeats actions at a specific date and time. So if I want to send an email every day, or if I want to, uh, we have a client right now that has a need to count up on a property, so increase a property every time something happens, but at the end of the year, they need to reset that. They only want the count for the calendar year. So by scheduling a workflow, we can do that very easily. So we can say, when do this daily, weekly, monthly, annually, we can say the time of day. So let's say we want this to run daily at 8 a.m., we'll hit next. So that's that first feature that Operations Hub allows us to do, is those recurring workflows based on that schedule option here. The next thing it allows us to do is add a couple uh, actions into our workflow. So there's three actions that HubSpot Operations Hub turns on for you. The first one is send a webhook. So this is gonna be a little technical. So uh, if you're a developer, I'm sure you know what a webhook is, otherwise the developers on your team, the developers you're working with will, but allows you to easily pass information back and forth between another application. So an easy way to do a simple integration with another system. So you can select your method here, post or get, and then fill in the information for that webhook. The next thing here is custom code. So this is where we can really, really make workflows way more powerful. So if you've ever been in HubSpot and you wanted to do something in a workflow and the action wasn't available for you, you're like, ah, I just really wish I could automate this. When a contact does this, I wanna be able to do this inside of HubSpot. With Operations Hub, there's a really good chance that you can. Now you do have to write some code or have a developer write some code in these custom coded actions, but it really unlocks those possibilities. So I'll give you just a couple examples. The, the use cases are gonna vary really, really widely for this, but we've got one client that has a, a pretty complex lead routing system. So they've got quite a few salespeople and they base who gets what, they base how they assign their contacts to their salespeople on zip code. And there's a lot of zip codes in the US and they have a lot of salespeople. So one option would be a really, really complex if then branched workflow or set of workflows that would be a real pain to edit every time a salesperson left or they added a salesperson, they changed territories. But what we can do instead with Operations Hub is store all of that information in the table. So we just say, you know, this salesperson has these zip codes. Then we can use Operations Hub to reference that table, get that uh, HubSpot user and make that assignment. Another example is we've got uh, another client, it's a pretty specific use case, but they've got uh, tickets and they've got multiple contacts associated to those HubSpot tickets. And what they needed to do was they needed to look at that ticket, 
get a list of all of the contacts that are associated to that ticket and create a task for each one of those contacts. And those tasks need to be associated with the individual contact and the ticket. There's a, for a lot of reasons, a lot of those steps that can't be done inside of HubSpot workflows until we have Operations Hub with custom coded actions. So those are just two very specific use cases. But again, if there's anything where you just run up to a wall where you've looked for an action inside of a HubSpot workflow and it's not there, with custom coded actions, you can do it. Uh, a lot of those things that you're doing inside of HubSpot are gonna be done with the HubSpot API, but you can also do things with other applications API or anything that you can do in JavaScript, you can do here. And then the last thing that HubSpot Operations Hub allows us to do is format data. And this is the really big one. The custom code unlocks a lot, but I think everybody with HubSpot can use this format data one. So I mentioned earlier that HubSpot kind of surfaces those format issues on a, on a record by record basis and was showing us that test contact and saying, hey, I've got a common placeholder here, do you wanna fix this? Well, this format data workflow is workflow action is gonna allow us to prevent those uh, formatting issues from being an issue in the first place. So we can select a property here. So let's just say we wanna do uh, first name. And then this format, we can choose all kinds of formatting issues. So, or formatting options. So we can, it doesn't, wouldn't make sense for first name, but we can add a number, we can add an amount of time, um, we can do some calculations in here, we can change the format of the date, um, and then there's gonna be some things that are, that are gonna be more important for text, so remove HTML tags, replace characters, we can, there's some capitalization things in here, we can cut characters out, we can convert it, to, change it to title case, so if you, you know, all lowercase or all uppercase, capitalize that first letter. And, you know, that's, that's one that pretty much everybody sh could use, right? We've got um, all kinds of form submissions that come in with people putting their, their first name in all caps or they're putting it uh, all lowercase. And then when, as soon as you go to use those in marketing emails, you're either yelling at them or you're not respecting them and you're using lowercase and it's very obvious that it's an automated email. Uh, and so these, format, that, these formatted um, data Workflow actions allow us to clean up those emails in addition to all of those calculations and things that you saw we could do with those numbers. So you can see we've got a long list of things that HubSpot has uh, built in for us. We also have this custom mode. So if we wanna create our own formula um, that uh, would do something to the data in a property, maybe you wanna have some uh, you know, really specific number formatting or things like that, you could do it with this custom mode. So those are the three actions that send a webhook custom code, format data. And that's really all there is to HubSpot Operations Hub. We've got these really powerful workflows with these three new actions. We've got the schedule workflows, and then we've got that data quality command center. So I mentioned that I would uh, include a couple things from Enterprise. Enterprise is going to give you all those things that a normal HubSpot Enterprise Hub would give you. So custom objects, which are really powerful, um, more detailed uh, permissions and, and team controls inside of HubSpot if you've got a big team. Uh, so it's got all of that kind of stuff in it. For Operations Hub specifically, it's gonna give you a couple things. So the first one is gonna be data sets. So this is gonna be for a portal that has a ton of data, a lot of properties. Um, and if you want to just kind of create a small data set for really quick reporting, you can do that inside of HubSpot. And the real power there is if you've ever tried to go into a HubSpot custom report and do some calculations in that report with those properties that are available, you can't really do that with HubSpot's reporting tool but you can do it with data sets. So that's a one reason or one um, way that a lot of people use data sets is to be able to do some custom calculations in those reports. And then the second big thing is going to be a really powerful integration with Snowflake. So if you use Snowflake, um, it's a data warehouse tool. It's, a, it's a basically a software provider, really common for large enterprises um, that use data warehouses and similar tools. If you use Snowflake for your data warehouse, then really consider Operations Hub Enterprise version because there's a really tight integration there. So, uh, but like I said, most people are gonna need that uh, professional version and just uh, really clean up your data inside of HubSpot and again, make those workflows super, super powerful. So that's all there is to this demo. For more HubSpot tips, tricks, and how-tos, make sure you hit that subscribe button and jump down to the description below to sign up for our newsletter. See you next time.